Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to an airbrushing for the beginner. We're on episode five and it's portraits. So I hope you've seen the little update last night on what was happening. So we're gonna start off this morning with a little bit on grayscale as we're doing a grayscale portrait. And I'll just do you a mix, a start off mix to work from. And then you can get to grips with mixing your own grayscale. Now the things you'll need for mixing a grayscale is a value finder, which is one of these. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get one of these from. It's basically, it shows you the shades from black all the way up to white. So you sort of go down the grayscale like that, opposite side then go up the opposite side there. And you've got these little cutouts. So when you work on your reference, you can slide the grayscale cutout to where you're working on and find the tone that you're after. Now I find using this that way, it can be a bit fiddly because if you're working off a screen, all different grayscales are different on pictures, especially on TVs because you get different settings, different brightness settings, so they can work out completely opposite to your actual grayscale finder. And it's the same when you do printouts on A4, A3, the tones can be completely different. So how I work my grayscale portraits, I'll mix a set as close as I can get it to this. So you've got your black and your white, what you start off with, which I've got here, a black and a white. And then I'll mix a black and white in a pot. So I drop like 20 say drops of white to start off with and then do one drop of black. Mix that, get yourself some paper, preferably the same paper that you're working on. So I've cut some little strips of the one that we're working on today. So do some little test out strips like this. Do your first mix, spray a piece onto your paper and then slide that behind the little cutouts and work your way along until you find that mix that sort of matches up to this. And that's all I've done basically is that you just do the first mix of white with one drop of black. And then if you want to lighten it up, you go a little bit more white or if you want to darken it, you go a little bit more black. And now I've done the same and worked along and I've sort of got my pre-mixes in bottles. Now these aren't 100% to this, but they are sort of very close. I've got them as close as I can get to this. And how we're gonna work this portrait today, because the actual colors don't even match up to any of this, I'll just go off and find sort of the lightest tone on the face, and I'll pick the lightest tone that I've got, and I'll work from that and I'll work my own grayscale up. You've not got to mirror match your picture, guys. You really haven't. You can get it as close as with the tones that you've got. You'll get the same look, but as I say, you'll be, you'll, there'll be different shades in this, in different pictures, different printouts. All printers aren't the same. They will print out slightly different. So just work it how you want to work it, but if you can get your grayscale similar to match your finder, because it's very rare, I slide this up to a piece of artwork, very rare. I'll just, I brought this just to get a rough idea on a grayscale and mix to these. So you're aiming from them ones down, you've got your black and your white at the top and just aim for them down like that. So I'll do you a little mix now, a basic mix. So drop a little bit of white, So we've got some white in there and I'm going to go one drop of black and it will give you a rough idea. There's two drops of black gone in there. Just give that a little mix. Like that. And this is quite thick. So we'll drop a little bit of water. in there, like so, 
So that's your first mix. So this one is a very light grey. Now going off of that mix, we'll drop a little bit in the brush. Just pull that through. Get your paper and spray to your paper like that. Let that dry. Never put your test paper paint up to your value finder when it's wet. Let your paint dry because paint always dries down a different colour. It'll either dry down light or it'll dry down darker. Just dry that off. And just keep adding it until you get 100% coverage on your test panel piece. So you sprayed that on your first test strip and now place it behind your value finder and work down. And as you can see, that actual tone is very off compared to that. You're sort of more round here, round number nine and number eight value. So you probably have to add just a tiny little bit more black and you'll sort of hit that mark. But that's what you've got to do. It can take a bit of time, but once you've got your set, measure out your white. So always start off with like say 20 drops of white and then go one drop of black and you can just jot down on how you've got that mix to match up. So that's how you'll do it. It can be time consuming, but once you've got it dialed in and you've got your drops to what you to your to your measurements and all that, it you can just bottle it up and it becomes really, really quick, guys. So that's how you'll do a grayscale. That's how I do it anyway. Uh, we'll move on to brush setup. Now I've just had a little game changer. If you own a PS270, which is the Mr. Hobby Creos, um, I've just got the Takumi trigger and the Takumi trigger fits straight on. So we've got a custom PS270 now with a Takumi trigger and it feels absolutely brilliant, guys. It really does. It's a nice flat top, slopes to the front. And it's weird because this trigger feels better in this brush and putting the PS270 trigger in the Takumi feels even better in that. So swapping the two triggers over, I think it's a game changer for both brushes because the Takumi is very small at the front and you've got your slope trigger, it pushes you forward to the front of the brush, but dropping the PS270 trigger on the Takumi, it sits your finger back slightly, gives you a little bit more clearance and it makes the brush feel better in my eyes. But the trigger on this, Beautiful, it really is. It's a game changer for this. So I'll leave a link where you can get the Takumi triggers and they fit straight in the PS270. So nice little game changer if you own a PS270. So that's what we're using. I'm all set up. We're gonna start off with a very light tone. Now I'm probably gonna go in with like a value of eight or a seven to start off with and you'll first see, I'm gonna drop you on time lapses on this. I'm gonna start mapping out the image in a value of seven and eight and just do the seven and eight sort of all over the picture where the light parts are and work around. And then I'll just start coming down the tones, find the next darker shade and just start working in the darker tones and leave the very, very dark black ones till last. Now the reason why I leave the dark black ones till last, if you go over them areas where it's dark, like on the nose here and round the top of the eye where that's there, you've got the eyelash bit there, this dark bit here. If you go over with the lighter tones, it doesn't matter because you're going darker over them. So you can sort of work all the lights all over and then them darks will cover up and sharpen up them areas like round here that crack in the mouth there. We've got a line here. So if you're hitting over these with the light tones, or these not so light tones here, when you drop them darker edges in with the shields, 
it just sharpens them pieces up. So that's how we'll work it. You'll see as we go along, I'll drop in time lapses and I'll talk it through as much as I can on this portrait. So I'll move the camera around, get you set up sort of this angle because I'm left-handed, you'll get an image coming in this way and we'll crack on. So I'll see you in a bit. a little talk through that time lapse. I've gone in with the value seven and that one where I've dropped a little bit of white in the first mix with a drop of black, that was really thin. So I basically, because the, the seven was quite thick, just dropped a little bit of that in and it gave me that tone there. So I've worked off that one. So that's my lightest tone that I'm going in with. And I've just sort of mapped around the image and looked at where sort of these shadows are and these darker bits and just put them sort of bits in place around the edge around the nose this is a lot darker around here but i've got them in them light tones here just to get around where these highlights are going to be and sort of bring them in the light tones around we can keep working that as we go along but that's the sort of first map out of the image it's all sort of in place and now we'll just start I'm going to usually go in on the eye. I always start on the eye and work the eye in first. Do a bit at the eye. And then I'll just start moving around. You'll see me bouncing around the image. We've got some shields to use to get some of the sharp edges. We'll use those. And you'll see me as I go along. I just won't stay in one specific place for too long. I'll sort of move about. As you see in that time lapse, I was moving around, putting little bits in, looking across at the image, and just working the little bits in. Now, we'll be using a Posca paint pen to drop these dot highlights in, wherever there's some real sharp highlights. I just drop it in with the Posca on this paper. If this was synthetic paper or something like that, and was going for full on photorealistic, we'd be knocking it back with an eraser and building the tones up that way. Because we can't manipulate the paper, we're just gonna get these real nice sharp highlights with a either paintbrush, just dot it in if you've not got a Posca paint pen, and we'll be using a paint pen, if I can find it, it's around somewhere. But yeah, we'll be using that. So I'll stick you in another time lapse, then give you another talk through, and you'll just see this picture sort of come together and eventually come to life in the end. So I'll see you in a bit. Chuck sort of got carried away in that time lapse. Now, the next tone I went in with was a value, I just dropped straight down to a value four and started to darken it out. So as you can see, we've dropped sort of pass over the lips. We've started to darken his nose, dropped a bit of the eye in, and I'm basically putting sort of the next, where you've got the real sort of blacks here, I'm dropping the color that's behind the black. So we went in with like a seven all over, then I went for the next sort of darkest tone, which I thought was near enough, basically a four. Drop the four in. Now there is textures on this. So you see me going and doing some textures. Now, the easiest way I find to do like a texture that looks sort of similar, that looks quite good on a portrait, especially on this, because it's very grainy and sort of dotty. I basically set the trigger so I've got a teeny bit of paint coming out and then just sort of keep it down at one like you're doing a real small dot and keep that paint 
onto that sort of like minimal amount and then just sort of flick the brush about so you're creating I'll zoom in a minute on the camera you're creating that so it's like one dot but keep your trigger down so you basically there's only going to do a line a small line where you're doing a consistent paint flow and then just sort of flick the brush about so it's moving it and creating like a, a dotted sort of continuous pattern and that's how I'll get them textures that are in on the nose here and it just sort of dots the texture around make sure your paint consistency is quite right because you want the continuous flow Now I'll show you on this bit here, just a little, because there is some very fine textures and you can just dot that about. A lot of people say do like figure of eights, tiny little figure of eights. But it's just a nice easy way of adding a little bit of texture. Because it's very subtle. camera's probably not picking this up but you're just basically bouncing around with a brush and it's putting you some textures down you can see that there very it's probably not picking it up but very very soft flickery type textures because as I've blown this image up it is got a lot of texture normally female faces are very soft and smooth so you can just do like real soft transitions but this has got a lot of grain in it so I'm just trying to put it in where it is on the actual image very grainy this image is so I'm just going to drop a little bit in around the bottom here to grain it up and as you see I went in with some shields when I started working around this piece here, when you look on the actual image, it's very dark here, so it's that that's black, near enough jet black on these tighter edges here. So I'm just working a darker tone in here and putting textures in because I know the black, the final darkest colour, will put them sharp edges in where I need to go in. And I'm going with the shield and just pop them sharp edges out where the black needs to be. Same with on the nose. Went in light, so it's two colours so far. It's the seven, and I've gone straight down to a four. And then we can pop the highlights out a bit later on. So I can just knock that back with the four and just pull a little bit in. Just backing off with a brush. And just darken that tone out there the idea is not to go too dark too quick the minute you go dark too quick it will look really it'll just ruin it you've got to go really light just work your areas in really light like with the seven so if you see textures on the very light drop them in with the light and then do your next layer over the top drop the same textures in over the top of that seven and you're just building the layers up but very very lightly and it gives you depth you'll see the depth of them tones as you look at your picture instead of it looking like one dimension one color or two black like black tail edges you've got to get them sort of textures and build them up as you go along but once you get a way of dropping a portrait down like this this is how I'll do all my grayscales. I'll do them all the same. Like this, going like textures if there's textures there. And it's not got to, you've not got to get it picture perfect. As long as you get it so it looks like that, you've got all your pieces in the right places, 
The tone of it can be slightly different. Make it your own. You've not got to make it exactly the same colour as that and that and that and that. That's when you're going into the proper full on photo realistic and you're spending two, three, four days on one piece. And that's why I don't like going down the photo realistic route because I can't sit on one piece for that long. I'm a quick painter and I just like to get it to where I want to get it to and go, yeah, that's enough. That picture looks like that. It's nice and sharp. The textures are there. It's, it's enough on that picture. Actually, you can just spend too long, I think. Just make it your own. Find your style and how you want to paint. You've not got to do it this way. You may find an easier way. But for me, I find this way an easy, an easy way for me to paint. So we've used the shields, we've used a seven, I dropped straight down to a four. And with it being the lighter four, where you've got the eyelashes here, eyebrows and eyelashes, you can still see when you look close up the pencil lines where the darker pieces need to be. If you go too dark too quick, you can cover your lines up too quick and then you can't see where you're going. But if you go light, you've still got sort of a, a nice outline to work on and see where you are. You're just mapping out the image. First pass, map it out light. Second pass, map it out a little bit darker. Next pass, you're just going over it and over the same bits again, but you're just putting it going darker as you go along. If it makes that, if it makes sense. So just a few more little textures. This is going to be dark here, so I know I can just go in with this grey tone here because this is going to go a lot blacker. So I'm just going to fill that with this one. And it sort of fades out down the bottom. See, when you look on the image here, there's tiny little dot textures in here, but I'm not going to go all these little tiny dot textures. I'm just dropping a few in. And with that little bouncy technique where you do the little dots and you're moving, this paint's a little bit thick, it's not flowing very good. You can get up close and do tiny ones. So you get that sort of effect there, the little tiny ones. And then when you back off with the brush, you'll get the same texture, but more of a misted out one. So you can use both styles as you're doing it. But I'm running, I've been running the air pressure around, I think it's 20 PSI on the main line, about 22. And I just sort of dialed this in because this paint's been sitting in these bottles for so long. Sometimes it's struggling to flow in here. You, you can always tell by the sound of your brush if your paint consistency is right. And just do a little bit more. And it's always good to go to the side of your piece before you start painting and just check your brush. See, this paint is really, I'm having to pull the trigger quite far back, but we'll get it. A little bit more text around these eyelashes and down this bottom piece here. A bit here. A few little dots because there is some like darker dots and lighter dots. A bit more wash now thrown in here. And as I say, it's not got to look identical. Some bits in here. Wash a bit of colour out down here. A little bit more there. 
And just get used to your distances when you're painting. You know when you go in close, you're gonna get them real small little bits. And when you back off with a brush, you can get them nice, softer, blown out tones. You can just soften them edges up just by flicking the brush, a little bit of paint like that. And you can drop them tones in. A little bit. And if your brush isn't spraying right, and you're going up and you're moving your trigger back and you're near your piece of artwork, get over to the other side and just get on your practice piece and make sure your paint is flowing right. Because there's nothing worse than going like that, pulling back and all of a sudden it splatters out and it's covering your piece. So just have a blank piece next to you and just keep testing your paint the flow of it and see if it's okay before you go in and commit to pulling the trigger on your artwork. This will start to pop once we start getting the blacks in. We drop the highlights in and the image will just go, it just pops. All of a sudden it just goes, you're just painting the shapes don't concentrate on the whole picture if we're doing this piece here you know you've got to come in on a sharp 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 it goes dark and fades up to light so i put this value seven in here then went in with the four and just dotted up to give it that sort of texture it's quite light at the top but we know when we come in with the black we can black the bottom of that tear piece there on the clown and just sharpen that up and then that will just give you the same look as what that is same as the top, darker to the top, which is here. Dotted and lighter coming down, but we'll have some darker lines off that. The eye, I've just worked in the dark, so we've got to go a little bit, probably darker here, under here, on the roll of that. Bit darker there. I've got the hairs to go, but put them in later. So yeah, you're just working around your piece. Take your time, start off nice and light, go in with a value light one first, like I went in with a seven, and I went straight into a four on this. And always check your paint. This paint, because as I say, it's been sitting. I mean, I'm pulling the trigger back there and that's just coming out now. So it's very, very grainy, this paint is. It really needs a new battery there because it's been sitting for a long time. I'll need to mix some more. And as you can see there, with this paint, quick blast up and that's how watered down I'm having to use it. So I'm having to dial the Mac valve in. Just test your panel, dial your Mac valve in until you stop it seeing, you don't see the spider web in. And that's just nice. That air pressure's bang on now for that. So we can drop a little bit more paint in. I know it works. That's really, really nice. So I can drop a few more little details in round here. A little few dots in here. And once you get your paint dialed in and your air pressure, your brush will work so well. Beautiful little textures here, and I'm just doing that bouncing. I've got the trigger set, so it's bringing the paint out, and then I'm just flicking the brush about, sort of doing this, as they've got a little vibrating plate in your hand, flicking it about, moving it about, and it gives you them textures. It starts to build them up. Few round here. But this is a really nice paper to work on. It was the cheaper pad. So it, the paint sits really well on it. You can't do any erasing techniques on this, but with this you don't need to.
feel all this around here. And basically you can see my finger, I've got the finger set with the consistency of paint and I'm just flicking and bouncing the brush about. And it's giving me a random texture. So that will do on that. I'll stick you in another time lapse and I'll give you another talk through in a minute. time lapse there and it's sort of done. Uh, quite a quick one, I'll talk you through what I did. We started off with a value seven, nice and light. Then we hopped onto a value four, which is this one here. And as I say, I was doing the text as I talked you through at the beginning and went through. And you're basically just going over and over and over and over. I went in with a Posca paint pen to pop the highlights out, highlights out on this because we can't erase back, it would have been nice to be able to erase back because then you can get, you can manipulate the paint more as you're knocking it back. But I'll just posca paint pen and just pop the highlights out where the eye is, bit on the nose, bit on the lips. I'm gonna call this one done. We could work this more and more and more, but as I say, with this paper, you can only go so far with it, but we've got it down, looking like the actual one on the TV screen. It's quite a simple one to do if you go in nice and light. Start with your value, your lightest value, pick your lightest one on there. And if you've got textures, just do them type of textures that I showed you there. They're quite common on faces when you're doing like textures on men. Women usually come in a lot softer, so you're just doing nice soft tones and blending them across. And then work your tones, if you've got textures, go over again and just start building the textures up and building the darks and the lights and then you get it to sort of looking similar to what you're working on. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on the 
beginners class 4 portraits this is the first one we'll, we will be doing some more along the way some different ones I'm going to be sticking to some grayscale portraits let's see if we can just demask this because this paper does grab when you use masking but that's come out okay it could look nice if it was in a frame this one with a nice board around it and make it pop we'll just demask this side and it's just starting to pull that paper but there you go that's the finished piece demasked and as I say always have a piece of paper next to you so when you're before you go in and start to paint you're not getting a splattery brush and it goes onto your work you can test your airbrush and your colour to the side of you it always helps guys so I hope you've enjoyed it don't forget if you're new to this channel click that subscribe press that notification big welcome to all the new subscribers that have come along and a big thumbs up to all the regulars that keep watching and all the comments guys it's much appreciated and as you know I get back to you straight away on the comments so yeah I'll see you in the next one